So there's a lunar eclipse uh, coming up next week on the morning of the 26th of May. So this uh, short video, I'll show you a few tricks for identifying potential uh, potential shot locations um, for that. Here in Boulder, Colorado, that's in sort of the western part of the central western part of the U.S. I guess it's never quite as far west as you might as you might think. I always think. Um, and if you're familiar with the area, um, I'll zoom out a bit so you can get a sense of where we are. There's the state line and uh, Boulder is in the northern half, it's north west of Denver. And you can see here in this topographic map, the line of the foothills of the Rockies. Here's, here's the Rockies here running north south. And so in Boulder here, um, we have these foothills to the west of town. So let's find the let's find the the moment of the eclipse. Uh, I'm just going to click forward with the events. There's May 25th, and that's the perigee moon. And here we are on the morning of the the 26th of May. And at 5:12 in the morning, that's when the t this short total eclipse will start, roughly speaking. If I uh, look on the map here you'll see the azimuth line of the moon shows it it's moving towards this this broader line here where it sets and that's that happens actually after sunrise so clearly we're not going to be interested in photographing that so much uh, the the action happens a bit before sunrise after civil twilight so the sky will be relatively light but the moon is up uh, it it should be visible it's not going to be quite as intense a red as you might get, I, I suspect, at least in, in a darkened, fully darkened uh, night sky. Um, but here is the moon at the start of the total, total eclipse uh, off to the southwest. Now the question obviously is, is it visible above the, the foothills of the Rockies? So what I'm going to do is show you the 3D sphere as a way to quickly check that out. This is with uh, the Pro subscription with the the terrain enabled. Um, and you can probably see fairly quickly there that the, the line from the red pin to the moon is shown in red to indicate that this is during totality. It's getting cut off by the, by the mountains, um, or the foothills rather. And if I zoom in, you get a better sense that actually we're not really going to see it from, from downtown, downtown Boulder. Uh, we're going to need to get a little bit further away from the from the mountains. So I happen to know that there is some higher ground off to the north of town here. Let's have a look. I think this is what I'm looking for. It's a place called, oh here it is, yeah, Lookout Road. Um, and it's called Lookout Road because it's, it's, you can see stuff from there. And if we were to pull off a little way here just to the north, I'm going to zoom out again, and you can see that we're we're further away from the the foothills. But let's check if that gives us a a better viewpoint. Uh, here you can see the, the the I'll turn the lights on so you can see a little bit better. Um, where we need to zoom out in order to bring that topography into into view. Okay, here we go. There are the foothills. Um, now, if I zoom in, you can see that. From there, the moon is definitely going to be clear of the mountain tops, and if I go to the greatest eclipse, yeah, it's still above there. At the end of total eclipse, it's literally on the point of setting behind the the, the foothills. So this is how you can very quickly use the sphere to say, am I going to have a clear line of sight from my shooting location to the object of interest, in this case the moon, uh, at the required time? However, let me click back and show you one thing I wanted to click in here. I'm going to zoom out one more level. The The mountains that are in view at that point aren't perhaps the most interesting. There are some more spectacular looking peaks uh, up here further north. I'm imagining that what I, what I would do for this is to put a long lens a telephoto on the camera, crop in fairly tight on the tops of the distant mountains and get the moon setting over them. So the more interesting the, the ridge line and the topography of the mountains, the, the better. So if you know the area, you probably know that uh, to the further north here, um, 
in the Indian peaks there are some good good peaks and this one here is is Long's Peak which is the highest mountain in this part of the of the Rockies so if we flick back to the map it's quite easy to take the red pin I'm just going to use the C key to recenter the the um, the the map and let's just use we could fine tune this later but using this north south road here you can see that as I move the pin up the road at the time of the start of total eclipse I can get it so that it's just to the south of Long's Peak which is marked there on, on the map. So let's go back to the sphere and see what that might look like from that position and yeah there it is um, if I zoom in a little bit you can see the, the, the little spike of, of Long's there I'll just decrease the size of the moon it's well clear that's at 1x size. I often have it set to something larger just for ease of visibility. Um, and at greatest eclipse, it's it's right there um, in the in the, the middle of this little dip. So that could work quite well. Uh, there are lots of different options, Mount Audubon, um, Arapaho Peak, uh, etc. Uh, that you could easily identify using this trick of use a topographic map, find the peak, drop the pin, check the sphere, um, see what it's going to look like with the topography. So that's it. Um, we'll see what happens early next Wednesday morning and uh, I'll probably do a bit more work to decide exactly where to, to set up and uh, hope for some clear skies. Hope you enjoy the eclipse. Thanks for listening.